Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to explain the concept of logistic regression classifiers and will directly apply it to a practical case study. In the case study, we will assume that you have been hired as a consultant to a startup that is running a targeted marketing ads on Facebook. The company wanted to analyze customers' behavior by predicting which customer would possibly click on the ad. Customers' data, such as time spent on Facebook and their estimated salary, will be used to develop our predictive models. Logistic regression is used to predict binary outputs with two possible values, either zero or one. Simply put, logistic model outputs could be one of two classes, pass or fail, win or lose, healthy or sick. So let's get started with the case study. All right, so let's get started with the logistic regression intuition first. Linear regression is used to predict outputs that are continuous. So for example, if I wanted to predict maybe the, uh, the salary of an employee, for instance, or maybe I wanted to predict the uh, stock price, for example, tomorrow, for instance, um, all these outputs are continuous outputs, and we can use simple linear regression to do that job for us. However, logistic regression is used to predict binary outputs that has two possible values either zero or one. So logistic model outputs could be again, as I mentioned, one of two classes, either win or lose, healthy or sick, and so on. So let's take a look at an example so I can illustrate the idea. Let's assume that I have this table here and I wanted to develop a relationship between the number of hours of studying, okay? So here I have the number of hours of, of studying that any students could, uh, could do. And on the Y axis here, I have the pass or fail, okay? So simply put, if the students study for one hour, most likely they will fail. If they study for one and a half hour, they will fail. Two hours will fail. Three hours they will pass the exam. 3.25 hours they actually gonna fail. And then four pass, five pass, and six pass as well. So if we decide to take that data, which is again, we collected in the field, you know, we, we collected data about many students and we want to go ahead and uh, print it out here uh, or plot it out. So you will find that here I have every single data here are captured in on that graph. So you will find that simply I have kind of two levels only. I have level zero and I have level one. That's all what it is. So if you try to fit these data points with a simple linear model like that, you will find that your model will actually fail dramatically, okay? Because the, the, the actual data is designed for, I would say, classification. You can't just go ahead and fit a straight line like that. The performance will be really poor. And that's why we have to kind of shift from just a basic linear regression models into what we call it logistic regression models and try to capture that, you know, like nonlinearity in there. So to do that, I can simply go ahead and uh, do the log logistic regression. So let's take a look at if you wanted to uh, to fit in a logistic regression model instead of a simple linear regression. So let's go ahead. We have our data again. And again, here we, we try to fit the linear model. We're not going to work. And now we actually need to fit a logistic regression model that looks like that. Okay. And if you actually do this, that would be perfect because now the, uh, the actual logistic regression curve is saturated. It just, you know, it ranges between zero and one. And there are some values in between, maybe like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. So I have kind of, you know, like different ranges of probability in between, but they saturate between zero and one. And that's basically what I'm looking for. Because again, I wanted to perform a classification task basically. Okay, all right. So let's take a look at some math for the logistic regression. So as we mentioned, linear regression is not suitable to perform classification problems. And that's why we uh, we apply the logistic regression in general to do the classification for us. But if you actually take a look at the math behind the logistic regression, you will find that it actually started as a linear regression model, as just a simple linear regression model. So here I have the equation for the linear, um, linear regression. Basically, it's an equation of a straight line, or simply the output y equals to b node plus b1 times x. And what we do is that we just apply a nonlinear function Call the sigmoid function, we call it sigmoid activation function, and then we, we generate what we call the probability. So we say px equals 2 sigmoid of y, 
where y is represented by that straight line equation. So if you substitute with the equation in here, and the sigmoid is simply one over one plus e power minus y, if you substitute with y here, you will come up with the probability of x equals to one over one plus e power minus and you put the straight line equation, which is B node plus B1X. And if you actually go ahead and uh, print or plot that equation, you will come up with this orange line in here that tell me the uh, logistic regression uh, curve. And that's actually perfect to perform our classification task. Okay, all right. So the question is, okay, now I have actually a continuous output too. I actually don't have two classes. So what I could do here instead is I can simply say, okay, I'm gonna select a threshold and that threshold might be maybe like 0.5, for example, and any value that is below 1.5 and above 1.5 will be two different classes. So for example, I can have any value that is less than 0.5 that will be uh, classified as class zero. Any value that is above 0.5 will be classified as class one. And simply now I have a model that can do classification for me based on the outcome, based on the probability of the output. And then after I generate the probability, I can just apply a threshold that can tell me if I'm class zero or class one. That's all what it is. Okay, all right. So that's all what I have for the intuition uh, lecture. Let's go ahead into the code and see how can we apply logistic regression to perform classification on, uh, on an actual case study. Okay, all right. So now we have the Jupyter uh, notebook here open for us and you guys will have a link to the Jupyter Notebook as well. So you will be able to download it and run it on your machine too. So here's a problem statement. So you have been hired as a consultant to a startup that is running a targeted uh, marketing ads on Facebook. And the company wanted to uh, analyze customer behaviors by predicting which customer clicks on the advertisement based on their data. So we have the name of the customer, we have their email, we have the country, we have the time on Facebook, and we have the estimated salary as well. And these are simply the input to the model. And the output is simply just binary output, might be one or zero, that's all what it is. One indicates the customer has clicked on the ad and zero indicates that the customer did not click on the ad. Okay, so first we are going to import our libraries and data set. And we're gonna import pandas as PD, mainly pandas is used for data frame manipulation. We're gonna import numpy as MP and numpy is used for numerical analysis and matplotlib and seaborn are primarily used for visualizations and data plotting as well. If you press shift enter, that should run the cell. You should find the cell here ran is successfully, looks good. And simply here, I have my data, which is consists of um, entitled Facebook ads to CSV. And I'm just gonna use pandas to read CSV. So I'm gonna say pd.readcsv, and that should load my data. And here, I'm gonna feed the data in a data frame called training set. If I check out the training set here, here we go. Here I have again, a bunch of names. Here I have a bunch of emails. Here I have the country. Here I have the time spent on site. And here I have the salary. And here I have the generated, uh, kind of the generic prediction, which is simply either zero or one, okay? Please note that we are going to actually, just for the sake of simplicity here, we're gonna assume, we we'll try to kind of, you know, use only the most important data out of our data frame. So for example, the names, I'm just gonna drop it. I don't really need it. The emails, I'm gonna drop it as well. I'm just gonna primarily focus on two features only, which is primarily time spent on site and the salary as well. And the output will be the uh, predictions whether the customer clicked on the ad or not. If I check out the tail of the data frame, you will find that I have around 500 samples, give or take. And um, again, the, um, the outputs here are either uh, zero or one. So let's go ahead and explore our data and perform some data visualization. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to simply classify my data or just divide them either two categories, the one category and the zero category, which is simply click or no click. So here I'm saying, okay, please go ahead to my training set, which is my data frame. If you find my training set of clicked, if you find the column clicked, which is simply here, the output, if you find it equals to one, that means the customer has clicked on the ad. If it's zero, that means the customer did not click on the ad. So I'm just gonna basically divide them into click and no, and no click. And here, I just wanna explore maybe and see, do I have a balanced data set or not? So what I could do here, I can say, okay, please go ahead, show me the length of the click and length of no click. So I, I wanna see both. 
And I want to see as well the percentage, which is how many uh, customers out of my data uh, in the data frame have clicked on the ad and how many did not click on the ad. If you press shift enter, here we go. You will find that I have, I would say, extremely balanced data set, which is kind of, you know, I would say uh, pretty, uh, pretty unique in general. When you, um, in practice, you don't have, you know, like perfect data set when you deal with real world data. So here we have the total is around 500 uh, samples. Number of customers who clicked on the ad is 250. And the percentage is around 50.1%. And the rest who did not click on the ad is around 49.89. Obviously, if you sum them up, you will come up with 100%. Let's go ahead and use Seaborn scatter plot to plot simply my time spent on site versus my uh, salary. And on the hue as well, I'm going to show the two classes, which is simply the customers who clicked and the customers who did not click. So if you press shift enter, that's what you get. So basically here, here are my two classes. Here I have the um, simply class uh, zero, which is the blue dots. The orange here, that's class one. So it looks like this, this data set is not linearly separable. So which, which means now I need like a more of an, I would say non-linear boundary to actually kind of um, uh, classify these two classes. So let's see how we're gonna do, we're gonna deal with that in our, in our code. So what I'm going to do, to do here is I'm going to plot the box plot to show me the clicked versus salary, here we go. So here I have, it looks like the, um, the people who actually clicked on the ad, which are class one, have in general higher salary compared to other customers who did not click on the ad. If I do the same with the uh, time spent on site, you will find that the average for the people who actually clicked on the ad have higher time spent on site compared to the blue class. If you plot the histogram for the salary, here we go, so the salary distribution, the mean is around, I would say 50,000 and um, it ranges between zero and 100,000. And if you wanna check the time spent on site, that's what you get. Basically you will get, again, that's a distribution on average between 30 and 40 minutes approximately. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead to step number three and prepare our data to perform the, to perform the training. So let's go ahead and check out our training set. Again, that's our data. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to drop unnecessary columns. Just gonna get rid of the names. I'm gonna get rid of emails. Country, you can actually keep if you wanted to, and but you have to convert it basically into um, using a dummy, um, dummy variables to feed them to the machine learning model. But what I'm gonna do here, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna drop the country as well, okay? So if you press shift enter, now it's gone. Check out the training set. Here I, ends, I ended up with time spent on site, salary, and I have the output which is clicked or not, okay? So now I'm pretty much ready to actually divide my data into training and testing. So first, I'm going to allocate my data. All the inputs, we're gonna call it X, uppercase. All the outputs, we're gonna call it Y, lowercase. So here I'm gonna say, okay, please go ahead to my training set, drop clicked, and that will be the X. And the actual column clicked, that will be the output. That will be the outcome, which I'm looking for. My target variable Y. Shift enter, looks good. Now I can actually scale my data using sklearn.preprocessing and using standard scalar will scale my data. So if you press shift enter, looks good. And now I can use scikit-learn to divide my data using obviously train test split to divide my data into training and testing. So again, I'm gonna import the library here and here I'm gonna use train test split, feed it in my X and Y. And please note that the test size is set to 20% which means I'm going to use 20% of my data to test for testing and 80% for training. Check out the X-train shape. So that's my X-train, two columns. That's my Y-train, which is one column. And now I can simply go ahead and train a logistic regression classifier model in scikit-learn. It's actually, they made it very, very easy. You don't actually need to worry about the actual implementation and the math behind it. It's just, you know, two or three lines of code and you're good to go. So we're gonna say from sklearn.linear model, we're gonna import logistic regression. And then we're gonna say, we're gonna here I imported the uh, class. And then here, I'm gonna instantiate an object out of my class. And then I'm going to apply the fit method to my object, feed it in my training data, which is xtrain and ytrain. And you press shift enter, and here we go. The model is trained. And now in step number five, we are going to test our model. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna take my classified model and apply the predict probability onto it. 
So if you press Shift Enter, that will give me the probabilities, that will give me the predictions from my model. And I can do the same as well here. Okay, so here, um, what you guys see here is that we have done classifier.predict probability. These are the actual probability that has been generated out of my model, okay? But what I, what I could do is if I say classifier.predict, that would give me the actual classes, either zero or one. So now I got a bunch of zeros and ones, and we actually have done that on the training data. What I need to do, I need to do that on the testing data as well. So here, I'm gonna say, actually gonna run that to check out the white train, and I'm gonna say classifier.predict, I'm going to feed it along X test. That will give me my predict test. And here I can simply plot the confusion matrix. So what I could do afterwards is that I could visualize the results simply by plotting the confusion matrix. There's just one kind of you know matrix that, uh, that show us the performance of our classifier models. So simply I can say from sklearn.matrix, I'm going to import confusion matrix. And then we're going to say confusion matrix feed it along my Y test, which is simply my ground truth versus my Y predict test, which is simply the model predictions coming out from, uh, from my model. And if we use Seaborn SNS.heatmap, that will plot me the confusion matrix. And here I have 43 samples that have been correctly classified. These are the true positives. I have 43 samples that have been correctly classified. These are the true negatives. Here I have five and nine. These are the samples that have been misclassified by the model, which is, I would say, pretty good overall given that we, we just we didn't do any hyperparameters tuning or, or any of that. Just use scikit-learn and it was very straightforward. I can also print the classification report. So I can say from sklearn.metrics, I'm going to import classification report. And then I'm going to import, we're going to print the classification report. And you find that we have reached average or total of around 86%, which is not bad. Precision of 0.83 on class 0, 0.9 on class 1. Recall of 0.9 and 0.83, and F1 score, which is the harmonic mean between precision and recall, is around 0.86 and 0.86, which again, not bad, okay? The last step is that we are going to visualize the training and testing data set. I just wanted to see, okay, I wanna print my original data points, and I wanted to print as well the boundary line that actually separate the two classes, and I wanna see this basically visually. I just wanna see, like, the did, the, did my model actually classify the two classes correctly or not. So first, I can simply here use a mesh grid, and that mesh grid will create just a mesh for my data, and I will be able to, afterwards, to plot the boundary line first. So if you, if you run this cell, and if you actually check out the Y train shape and X train shape, and if you check out the X1 shape as well, here, what we're doing is that we just wanted to print our trained classifier. I just want to see the actual boundary line between the two classes. So if you press Shift Enter, that's simply what you get. So here I have my two classes, the blue class, and here I have the uh, pink class, and that's my straight line in here. So what I could do right now is I can simply print the actual dots, which is the ground truth, which is actually the actual data, the, the training data that I had, on top of this. So here I plotted only the boundary. Here I'm only plotting the actual training points. And here I'm gonna put them on top of each other, okay? So let's go ahead and print that. Shift enter, here we go. So that's again my original uh, data points. So if I print this and this on top of each other, that's what you do, that's what we're doing here. If you press shift enter, here we go. You will find that simply that's my boundary and all the points, all these points have been correctly classified. All the blue points, on the pink side, these are have been uh, misclassified. And on the other hand, the vice versa too. So all the points that are pink on the blue side, these points have been misclassified as well. And you can do as well the same for the testing data. So that's again my results. And these are the samples that have been uh, uh, wrongly classified or misclassified. And the blue dots here, these are the point samples that have been misclassified as well or classified as a class zero, but they were belonging to the class number one. So that's it. That's all what I have for this case study. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel for more videos.